All right, we're back. And if you're jumping on now, thank you very much. I'm trying to get it posted back to the Facebook page real quick. Takes a while for it to come up for me to be able to do that. Just did it on the Typer Radio Twitter page. Here we go. First down for the Ducks in the second overtime. Takes the snap, hands it off, and he'll fight his way up to about the 10-yard line. Still moving. Good run there by Juice Barnes, picking up a huge gain right there, making it second and five. Trying to see if they can punch in a touchdown and put all the pressure on the Chiefs. <laughs> second down. It looks like a gain of about five yards. Tommy up. Baker. Off tackle again to the right. He'll push it to the five-yard line. And the four-yard line, first and goal. And right now, the Ducks looking much more authoritative here on this drive as they have been gashing that Chiefs defense. And it's going to be an inside handoff to Baker. Baker pushing the pile, and he's in. Touchdown, Ducks. Just like that, three plays, touchdown. And now again, the extra point. Who's going to be the one that can be able to successfully convert it? That did not take long at all. No, that was a deep shot to the Chiefs defense. So wonder if maybe they're just a little dead from that previous drive. Big, big, big stop needed here by the Chiefs on the extra point try. Yeah, the only way that you have a chance to survive in this, again, is if you're able to stop them from the extra point conversion. Kirana Phillips, thank you for joining us. Yes, go Chiefs. I'm sure you're sitting at home just Here sweaty we, palms. Here man. we go. Ducks for the extra point try. They're up 31-25 here in the second overtime. They'll hand it off. And he's got it. He's got, he's got it. Got the extra point. That is huge. Now the Chiefs know what they need to do. Well, the Ducks, all you got to do is just keep them out of that end zone. And at very worst, don't let them convert the extra point. And this is insane. This has been insane. I mean, what has ever happened in this game? Name it, and it's happened. Chiefs now will start off at the 25. They have got the score. They need a one extra point to tie. They can go for the two for the win. Takes the snap. They'll hand it off to Teal. Teal's going to try to fight his way forward. And at this point right now, the Ducks know what's coming. Exactly. It's going to be a heavy dose of the big man right there. And So now, kind of what I said during the first overtime, now it's on the Chiefs. They have got to do something unconventional. Yep. It's now putting the real pressure on them as it's, again, Teal. I don't know how he has any energy left. Unbelievable football game to end this day of championship. I will not have a voice tomorrow. I don't have a voice now. Takes the snap. Hands it off on a, on a misdirection, and he'll fight his way to the 10-yard line. Third down and five. Can the Ducks stop him two more times? All the Chiefs have to do is pick up five yards for a first down, and they can live for another series here. But it's been a struggle to get some yardage against this Ducks front right now. It sure has. Third down and five here in double overtime. Ducks with the lead, 32-25. The Chiefs must score. First and foremost, they've got to get in the end zone. Third down play, takes the snap, hands it off to Teal. Teal's going to get wrapped up, and it's a fumble. fumble. It's a fumble. If the Ducks were getting it, get it, this game's over. Nope, Chief player fell and on And the Chiefs get it back. Wow. And you better thank 57 for the Chiefs, Micah Rollins, as he just saved the Colleen Code Chiefs. Yeah, for a fourth play. down play. I mean, heads up play to dive on that football just so that way you can live to see another down. But 
Timeout on the field. This is going to be a big challenge here for the Chiefs as they did have one kind of a Hail Mary pass to end the half. Did they have another play in their bag of tricks to just pick up the first down? I mean, that's that's got to be the goal right now. First Reach and foremost, the marker. you've got to get past the five-yard yep. line to get the first down. If anything, you tell your guys, you know, don't try to be the hero and go for it all. We can pick up the first down and continue to live the play. And that's got to be the idea and the mindset going forward here. But who's going to be the person that's going to do it for you? That's, that's going to be the big problem. You know they're all going to be looking at Teal. So if that's the case, maybe try to hit them with a little bit of misdirection. Do something unique with them. But you got to get at least the first down here. And that's a big, tall order right now as this Ducks defense has been stepping up. I'll tell you what would throw them off. They just start off in your formation, bring Teal out in the slot, and then throw a quick fader over the top. Just let him just outman everybody. Yeah, but they're not going to do it. They're going to just hand it Stuff to Teal. Him. And he is not going to get to the five. That's it. The Southside Ducks have won the Division One Juniors Championship in over in double overtime, thirty-two to twenty-five. And you can see the raw emotion of these Chiefs players. And I love the coaching staff of the Ducks going over, picking Teal up, hugging him, because they know, man, that kid was an absolute beast today. Unbelievable ending to this day of championship games. Unbelievable ending to this game. <laughs> wow. That's all I can say is I wow. Mean, it, it, that's, yeah. That encapsulates this eighth game right here. It's just... It was a legit dogfight from the start. You know, I, I joked with you and said if they played ten times, they might split five and five. And I think we just saw exactly why. This, these two teams are the same team. They're literally the same. Same formation, same plays, yeah. same mindset. Personnel. They're the same personnel. It's, it's it was just unbelievable how they are so similar and have never seen each other. Yep. That's a that's a thing right now that both of these teams, when they walk away, you know they just have respect for the other guy that lined up from across for them because they gave them the biggest fight that they probably had all season long. Unbelievable game and an unbelievable ending. Uh, it's unbelievable for ending for me. I am so wiped out. Yep. I am so tired. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure I can make it to the hotel room at this point, uh, but we're definitely going to get there and get some rest myself. Uh, these Chiefs definitely need some rest before they head back to Colleen because they just played, and I, excuse my language, they played their asses off. Absolutely. No, you, you're 100% right. They they laid it all out there. Both teams did, and it was just one of those situations. It's a shame somebody has to lose that game. As you can see, every Duck player is taking their time really congratulating Teal over there because they, they know, man, that, that kid is, is special. They brought it to him. And it was just the defense that stepped up in the end that made the big plays. And kudos to the Ducks. They didn't stop fighting either when there was a lot of things going wrong for them. And they were able to turn it around there quickly in the second overtime. In this case, it's sad that one team had to lose. But in this instance, congratulations to the Ducks, your champions. Unbelievable day. Unbelievable. I, I, I got nothing else to say no. except unbelievable. This was a, a fabulous weekend of football, fabulous Saturday of football. It was a long day, Yep, uh, a very, very long day, as it is now 1235 on Sunday morning, and we're just getting things wrapped up. The award ceremony coming up, we're going to leave the mic hot for you to listen to that. Once it's done, we're going to end the broadcast. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, thanks for Vibe, Vibe.com. Uh, Brandon, what a, what a day. Congra thank you so much for joining me here today. It's always good to have a color commentator. Yeah, especially when there's eight games. Yeah, especially when there's eight games. <laughs> now nah, I had fun. Thank you, Kenny, for allowing me to join you, man. And uh, this is the first time you and I have ever worked together and really enjoyed it with you, man. This was this was a lot of fun, so I appreciate you to do as well. Once again, final score, 32-25. to 25. In double overtime, the Southside Ducks out of the Houston chapter win the Division I Junior Championship in Taifa as the award ceremony gets underway. We will let you listen and kill it once it's done. Thank you for joining us. Have a safe and wonderful weekend.
Dale Morgan Division I Junior State Championship Trophy to the Southside Ducks. Please focus your attention to the center of the field once again. The Al Hollins Player of the Game Award is awarded to two players from the game. If you voted using the Slido app we announced, then you help decide who won these awards. Typha is proud to present the first Al Hollins Player of the Game trophy to G. Baker from the Southside Ducks. Typha is also proud to present the second Al Hollins Player of the Game trophy to number five, Ja'Kyrie Teal from the Kaleem Go Chiefs. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause for the 2019 Division I Junior Participants, the Colleen Co Chiefs, and the state champion, Southside Ducks. Your attention, please. Typho believes that education is very important and has developed Scholastic Excellence Award programs to recognize athletes who excel. Typha would like to recognize some of the 2019 Scholastic Award recipients today. The Honorable Scholastic Achievement Award is given to the athlete who qualifies by being either a type, rookie, junior, or senior, and has a GPA between 90% and 97.9%. This award comes with a scholastic medal. Typha is proud to present a 2019 Honorable Scholastic Achievement Award to Cameron Vines from the Colleen Cove Chiefs to the GPA of 93.3. Amari Barr from the Southside Ducks with a GPA of 92.7. And Caden Fernandez from the Killeen Cove Chiefs with a GPA of 91.7. Congratulations, Cameron, Amari, and Katie. Rashawn Anthony Richardson's Scholastic Excellence Award is named in honor of a type of football player who lost his life in a tragic car accident in 2004. This award is the second highest scholastic honor in Typha, with a monetary award of $100, a special scholastic t-shirt, certificate of, of, of achievement, and letter of congratulation. To qualify, the athlete must be either a type, rookie, junior, or senior, with a 100 or better GPA. Typhoon is proud to present the 2019 Sean Anthony Richardson Scholastic Excellence Award to Trenton Perkhalter on the Southside Ducks with a GPA of 101.8. Kyden Barker from the Southside Ducks with a GPA of 101. Trevor Gosney from the Killeen Cove Chiefs with a GPA 
and when he did point six. And Jay Murray for the League of Chiefs for the GPA at 100.3. Congratulations, Trenton, Kaida, Trevor, and Jane. On the behalf of Typha, Prayer Review AM University, and our sponsors, we thank you for experiencing Typha football at its best. Congratulations to all our state champions. Be safe getting home. And we'll see you next season on the field.